Well, <laughs> we made it back. I didn't give you a whole lot of the uh, the loading of this load. It was just kind of bing, bang, boom. Got in this morning, uh, or sorry, got into Rapid City, South Dakota last night. Pulled into the yard this morning. Hauled the load across the land, and here we are. Beautiful central Montana. Oh man, and, and uh, there's actually one more thing I'm gonna tell you about, but I'm not gonna tell you about it. Actually, I will tell you about it right now. So as I'm cruising across eastern Montana in the old, the old baby, I passed, uh, there were some gravel trucks just piling, hauling gravel, uh, piling gravel. Got a pit there on the road for a project and an empty one passed me, like coming towards me, like we crossed paths, I should say. And you'd have thought that a child had taken two fistfuls of rocks from the borrow pit and just chucked them all over my truck. I mean, I could hear it pinging on my mirrors, um, destroyed my windshields, um, took some huge paint chunks out of my, uh, uh, the, the condo part of the sleeper, like some big gnarly, just some, some not good stuff. And I haven't actually got to fully inspect that. I pulled over there at the rest area to look, but it was, it was very aggravating. I was not, not a happy boy. You know me, I'm a happy boy. I was not a happy boy. So what did I do? I went ahead and uh, followed the line of gravel trucks to the pit where they were unloading, even though the offender had long gone the other direction. I pulled in and uh, had some nice words with the uh, loader operator there who was just piling gravel. I pulled in, I did, I was nice. And they nicely said, hey there. He wasn't real excited to have a random flatbed truck parked in his yard. But I said, hey there, what uh, what do I need to do to contact your office about the truck that just busted my windows out? And, uh, <laughs> you know, they're not busted out, but they're, I mean, big old, you know, quarter size. <laughs> and from the outside, like the glass is gone, like it removed glass from my windshield. Uh, so I said, who do I need to talk to in the office? And he kind of told me who, and, um, and we did great until the very end. I just, I don't know what happened, but he got really upset about the inquiry. And we had a few nice words back and forth to each other. And uh, you guys remember Weston? Remember Weston? Oh yeah. No, yeah, Weston. Weston practices law now, of course, in Texas and is uh, licensed in Montana. So I just said, you know what? I'm just gonna call little brother and just let him deal with it. So we'll see how that turns out. I don't know what you do on something like that. These windshields, they're not hard, they're not easy to find. And when you do find them for these internationals, they're, uh, they're pretty pricey. They're, I think the ones that I had seen maybe out of Vanderhags, which is a truck junkyard for like 300 bucks, supposedly new, but uh, anyway, I'll keep you posted on that and maybe tomorrow, I'm gonna get home tonight and then tomorrow I'll, uh, I gotta take some pictures and document some stuff and so I'll show you, show you what I find. So uh, I'll include that in the video. <laughs> of course, maiden voyage, I'm like 150 miles from home and duh! I mean, it's like, it's serious stuff. Anyway, last load, this was a uh, concrete and uh, or mortar mixes for the, for the master mason here in, in Lewistown. But uh, anyway, I've got some great things in mind. As I was driving, this, I've just fallen completely in love with this truck because of the efficiency. It, they, they look funny because they're so big and so small if you look at the wheelbase at the same time. But I had some epiphanies while I was driving and we are going to embark on what I think will be one of the greatest trucking project adventures that has ever been endeavored to embark upon. And we're gonna do it. It's gonna be like Lewis and Clark style. We're gonna be going into the unknown and doing things that have not been done. And you're gonna to get to see it all. It's not gonna all happen right away. We're gonna make it into a series, but I, it just clicked while I was on the road and I went, we have to do this because of the wonderful efficiencies that I discovered driving this truck. My last tank of fuel, you guys, that I did, uh, <laughs> it was 50% it was loaded, 50% empty, over 1200 miles, seven point seven and i haven't done anything to it we haven't we haven't done any performance stuff to it there's so many things to do but anyway you're gonna love it let's uh let's get unloaded right now and we'll uh 
We'll get out of here and get home. I've pretty much been on the road for three weeks. I got home for an afternoon the other day, but that didn't count. Didn't count. Oh, what a deal, what a deal. Hey guys, it's Jax. And I've got a problem. Guess who arrived? <laughs> How's it going? Oh, you guys, this is my favorite fellow in all the land. <laughs> and I say that because I know that I am also his favorite fellow in the land. In all the land! All of the land. All Absolutely. The land. I was telling you guys about the Master Mason. Well. Right no, it's true. Is it? Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. No. Like, just take it. <laughs> no. 100%. Known from here to grass range. Here to grass range. 30 mile stretch. <laughs> yeah. He's the best guy east of town. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Don't go west. <laughs> There's another There's guy. There's another guy just over here yeah. that kind of has the. <laughs> That's right. You guys, right. you may remember CJ. You've listened to his sick beats. He's the drummer in our band. And he is, uh, whenever he needs something hauled, he likes to. Yeah. You know, his drum kit's the best drum kit that he uses, his equipment's the best of the sure. best. And so when he needs something hauled, he hires the, the best trucker. <laughs> <laughs> Always, man. Good stuff. That's right. All right, we're gonna get this off and uh, hit you back. Bang, boom. How'd you like that little adventure? Was it good? Huh? <laughs> Tell you what, I'm really digging this truck. I really dig that truck. I hope you enjoyed it as well. Oh man, you guys ready for me to let you in on a little secret if you haven't figured it out already? The secret is those episodes that you just enjoyed are one year old. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Here's what happened. Basically, uh, we went out and did some runs last summer and things were great filmed a ton of footage uh, If you liked those toilet hauling episodes, you might look back uh, To last summer we uh, put one out where I hauled a toilet on a barge out onto I think it was Lake Michigan if I remember right with this truck as well and uh I have some really cool footage of that truck going across the lake on a, on a barge that we had to privately charter. So if you haven't seen that, uh, maybe I'll throw it up as a suggested at the end of this video. You can check it out. <laughs> okay, so in my defense, we filmed a ton of footage. We had a lot of trucking adventures. We did this, we did that. And as we started to unpack the footage and putting out the, trying to put out a video every week, which we basically have... I just kept getting further and further removed from that episode, these episodes that you guys watched with the Grand Canyon and the Wyoming Highway Patrol and all that jazz. And it just kept getting later and pretty soon, 
summertime, it got really dry and turned brown. And now I'm like, well, it's brown. It's no longer like lush summer, spring, beautifulness. No one's gonna, they're not, they're gonna realize, sorry, you're gonna realize that this is not <laughs> time uh, relevant or whatever. So uh, we got into more stuff and then we went to Cerro Gordo again and blah, 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 blah. And here we go, all this adventure. So next thing I know, it's been a year later and I'm looking at that footage going, well, it looks very similar outside right now to what it did in the footage. So let's put it out. Everything's still relevant except the mysterious diesel prices that you may have noticed. You're like, man, it's $3.50 in Missouri. Where are you paying five and a half dollars a gallon? <laughs> well, last summer, that was the name of the game. Um, it's it's better, obviously, better this summer. Still extremely expensive. Diesel here is a little over four dollars a gallon in Montana, most places. So uh, still not great. Not the kind of prices we're looking for, but definitely some major relief from last summer. So with that in mind, you guys, all apologies, but uh, you still enjoyed the videos. <laughs> so what I want to do now that it's later, it is a year later, and this truck, uh, I used it last summer. I also hauled hay. If you go back and look, we hauled a bunch of hay, me and old man Rooster. We hauled a bunch of hay in the cab over from uh, far, far out in eastern Montana back here to the ranch. Uh, she did great, just ran like a champ. Hauled some cattle when we shipped our calves this year. Got some more footage of this truck uh, running. Well, that would have been like in uh, October, I believe, last year. September, maybe. End of September, October. It's just been great. So great that I am just dead set on making this my full-time fall run cow hauling rig. <laughs> okay? So right now what I want to do is take you over. Let's, uh, let's crack the door and see what kind of things... Are a miss inside blue three blue three here's the number one thing you're gonna notice and love oh yeah there we are wow wow wish come on <laughs> okay now I've had a little mouse problem ah, I've had a little mouse problem in here and they see a few mouse tracks up there I see some shredded stuff here tell you what why don't you give me a minute? I'm gonna clean this thing out and then I'm gonna give you an official 360 tour, huh? And we'll wrap this episode up. How's that sound, huh? All right, uh, I can't remember the last time we fired this thing up. So let's see if the batteries are even. Where's my voltmeter? 12.2 12 maybe? I'm hopeful. Come on, old girl, let's go now. sounds way better with that injector fixed, huh? You can't believe how smooth this thing got once I fixed that injector that you could hear in the last video. It was clonking, remember, at idle? <laughs> Sometimes when you park a rig for a long time, the drums and the brakes, they'll rust together just a little, little bit. It doesn't take much when you don't have a trailer hooked on. To keep the old keep the old truck from moving. So that is our little hang up. Old girl's trying to embarrass me now. Um it is not a rust thing. That happens a lot on my cab over Pete when it sits. You know, first time I go roll it out for the season, one of the back brake drums likes to be sticky. This is not that, however. This is something else. So when your truck will not release the brakes, there's a manual override. That's what these tools are for. So I'm gonna manually override the brakes, back them off. Backing them off means pull them back away from the drums manually. Um, so I can get it moved around to the shot pad so I don't have to lay in the gravel. Then we'll see what's going on. All right, so I backed it off manually. It's not backing off. If a brake's not backing off manually, usually means there's an, there's an S cam inside there. 
and that's what activates your brakes when that S-shaped cam twists. It pushes your brakes open and closed. It pushes them open and then there's springs that are supposed to pull them closed. Um, it's really hard to see right now without getting in the shop and taking the wheels off. But I noticed right here, there's space between the brake and the pin. So that's part of our problem. The springs aren't holding the brakes up tight. Um, anyway, I don't know if I'm going to have time today to dig into this because it's not really part of my mechanics plan today. I've got other more pressing equipment, but it'll be part of what we need to do to get this baby uh, road ready. That's for sure. All right. This whole truck's going to look a lot different when we get back, isn't it, Rabbit? Uh-huh. Why? Because we're going to clean it. <laughs> what do you think happened to it in here, Army? <laughs> what happened, Lash? Tell everybody. How the mice got it in there. It exploded by mice. Yeah, our cats, our cat, our barn cat, vanished last fall, and so we don't have a cat to eat the mice. And when there's no cat to eat the mice, what happens? Most cats. Yeah. So they're going to go ahead and vacuum up. They're going to, what are you going to do with all that bedding? Wash it. Wash yeah. It. And then uh, I cleaned up down here, guys. There's a little preview of what's to come, huh? Oh. <laughs> okay. I see some, I see some stuff. Rabbit? Hey. What do you think, baby? Looks very good. And it only looks good because why? Because I cleaned it. <laughs> You guys, Lash is, has an amazing attention to detail. One of your talents, huh? Mm -hmm. I was kind of veiled and sat around and <laughs> sang rap songs. Army was rapping for you? Well, he was doing something new and then same thing over and over again. All right, so tell me briefly what you did, Rabs. So I vacuumed right here and took all the stuff off the bed and over here, over there, over here, over there, and pick up all the garbage. You got the doors open so she's airing out real nice. Mm -hmm. Now all I gotta do is fix the brakes and we'll be good to go. Mm -hmm. And hey. I also have to put the bed in there. Hey, I got it in the washer in the shop. Nice work. All right, everybody. The moment you've been waiting for, the official tour of the 1999 9800 international cab over here she is you may be wondering why did you buy this truck paid way more money for this truck than i typically would for a cab over sort of project um, but for some very good reasons okay reason number one this truck is the last year i believe that international as far as i know the last year that international produced cab overs in the usa um, so essentially you could say this is the newest cab over that you can find made by international. Okay. Um, I also, reason number two paid, paid more money for this truck. And when I say I paid more money, I think if I remember right, I paid 26,000 for this truck, but it's like, it came off the road. It's not like it was some dinosaur out in the field that I bought. Like it's a run and go and use and truck. Um, also, okay, so reason number two, I don't, don't want to get ahead of myself. Reason number two is that Rooster transitioned from his 1980 Freightliner cab over to a 1991 uh, 9800 International. So this model is the same model that Rooster moved himself into after he had put two and a half million miles on his Freightliner. So this is... This model of truck is what I really grew up driving. I grew up trucking in the 1980 cab over. I grew up driving a 9800 International. Okay, you follow me? I just want you to, to understand all the good attributes here. Reason number three that I bought this truck and paid good money for it was that it's a one owner. The man that I bought it from bought it brand new in 1999 at age 60. He ran it, used it, went with it, and retired. He's the only guy that's ever run it. So because of that, I wanted it, okay? The more a truck's been passed around, typically the more it's been hacked into and scabbed on and, and treated uh, poorly. Reason number four that I bought this cab over. This is the one that's gonna get you, you guys. I am standing up right now. I'm six foot one and I'm standing up right now 
on top of the doghouse. This is the craziest and coolest thing that International came up with. I wish they had figured this out many years sooner, but they didn't. It was only like two or three years in time that they did this. And here's what it is. Well, imagine this at the end of a long, hard day of driving, as you've seen me do in this truck. You've been on some adventures. At the end of a long, hard day, I turn sideways, and what do I find? A walk in sleeper. So, out of the seat, you walk and you're in the bunk. This is the view from the bunk of this cab over. You guys, if you did not know this, most cab overs have what's called a dog house where this right here is all engine compartment. This whole area is where the engine would be. I mean, the engine's still there, they just lowered it. So it's what they call a flat floor international. This is it, there's a tiny little rise here, okay? Now, reason number five that I bought this truck. It has an N14 Cummins engine in it. It's a big, good, strong motor. One of the best, arguably, the best motor that Cummins ever produced. Um, depends who you talk to. I'm kind of of that mind. Although I've never owned an ISX Cummins. But uh, anyway, when I saw that it was, a, it was a big, fresh, modern, electronically controlled motor, that really got me excited. The only thing that would have been a little more exciting is if this truck had a Series 60 Detroit in it. That would have been even cooler. But check this out. Because it's a modern electronic control engine, should I get into a situation where this engine blows blows someday, like to where I have to remove the entire thing, I would probably replace it with a Series 60, giving me my third Series 60 Detroit uh, in a truck. Number six that I bought this truck. See that up there? Boop. That's a double bunk. Why do I want a double bunk in my truck? Ha! Because from time to time, I've been known to take kiddos along with me. <laughs> right? Yeah. So you have a place to sleep. Uh -huh. So if you came with me, me, you could sleep up there. Right? Mm -hmm. And Army, you could sleep right here on the flat floor. Yep. Yep. I'll sleep on an engine then. Yeah, you would. You'd stay nice and warm. <laughs> the old uh, the old 9800s, like roosters, uh, were pretty cool in the way that this ledge came all the way like to here. So essentially there was a third, it was just a storage compartment up here. This one has a little tiny one, but uh, it came all the way to here so you could sleep more kids here. That was, that was my jam back in my day. <laughs> so uh, by getting rid of that, they allowed it so you can come right out of the seat you can stand straight up and come back in. Yeah. Reason number seven why I bought this truck. <laughs> um, the good old the good old fella that ran it. I think. Let's see. It's at a. It's got a million and three hundred thousand miles on it. Okay, one point three million. The guy that I bought it from, one hundred and fifty thousand miles ago, overhauled the engine. Complete overhaul. Full overhaul. Got all the paperwork for it and everything. It was done in Omaha, Nebraska at an international dealership. So it was, and that's where he purchased it from. So it was all overhauled. Um, so it should be fresh, should be good to go, should have a lot of life. It runs really strong, I can attest to that. The fuel mileage it's getting is amazing. I'll hopefully speak to that in a little bit. That's reason number seven. Reason number eight why I bought this truck. <laughs> Reason number eight is that uh, one of his last trips that he did before he retired, which would be two years ago now, he was in Pennsylvania and started having some transmission trouble. He pulled into an international dealership in Pennsylvania and discovered that his original transmission was kaput. So he replaced the transmission 50, 40,000 miles ago. Got the receipts for it right here in the drawer. So, a lot of good value added to this truck so far. Reason number nine that I bought this truck. Look at this action. You know what this baby is right here? This, I don't have it flicked on. This is an air over hydraulic pump. Want to jack the cab up on this thing? You just push a button. And the cab goes, wah, 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 boom. Everything is there to work on. Everything's super easy to get to, super easy to see. If the air side of the jack fails, you have the manual backup, which is all I've ever known. 
<laughs> the accessibility is great, you guys. Along with that easy accessibility is this wonderful little short wheelbase, all right? And this leads me to reason number 10. And the final reason I bought this truck. Were this a long truck, you'd have drive line, then like right here, you'd have a, a cross member with a hanger that's holding the, the drive shaft. You'd go further down the line. You'd have another one down there. You go down the line, you'd have another one there. Well, each, each time there's a hanger and a joint, you lose power, okay? So this engine is making power right here, travels through this tiny little drive shaft, boom, puts the power right there. What does that do? Gives me better fuel mileage. It also takes an engine that is lower horsepower and allows it to run with trucks that are higher horsepower. Because say a, say a 500 horsepower truck going down the highway that's a long wheelbase, it's gonna lose a certain percentage, a pretty substantial percentage of that horsepower, you know, 100-ish to 150 horsepower, depending how long it is, it's gonna lose through that drive line, okay? This truck doesn't lose any of that. So it can be a 500 horsepower engine and it can take like 99% of that 500 horsepower and stick it to the rear wheels. So it allows me to get by with less. Does that make sense? Get by with, we're getting by with less because it's a shorter drive shaft. Ha! Yes. All right, y'all, it's getting a little breezy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to step out of the wind here so that the last bit of this video is not, uh, not so crazy. See me all right? Is that truck blue three? Remember the cab over Freightliner was old blue. The one that we got fired up again, dad's old one that's on the hill is blue two. This baby has to be blue three, okay? Blue three, all right? Is Blue 3 one of the weirdest semis that you've ever laid eyes on? It, and I'm saying this literally, has a shorter wheelbase than a three-quarter ton pickup. <laughs> okay. Yes, it is the weirdest thing you've ever seen. Am I also a weird thing that you've seen? Yes, we match. We are kind of one and the same. We're sort of fit for each other. Okay. Thankfully, I'm someone that has never really cared much about what people think of my my looks. <laughs> so, me and Blue 3, we're good. We're good. It's all good. It's all good. One of my favorite things about this truck is I've taken it out. I cannot believe how efficient it is. In fact, it's changed my mind a little bit about what is aerodynamically the greatest truck out there. Um, you know, they quit making these because people didn't want to drive them anymore. But I think that this rounded nose cab over is more aerodynamic than like my Cascadia or my TS, my T660 Kenworth. And I only say that because the fuel mileage that I get in this truck has thus far with the flatbed blown away anything that I've done in the past with either of my other two trucks. So it'll be kind of interesting to, to get in this truck more, put some more miles on the road and kind of see what kind of numbers we come up with, what it does. It doesn't really have any performance mods. Everything seems to be stock, uh, which brings me to my next thing. What are the plans for this truck? What are we doing with it? Okay. So she's gonna get paint, gonna paint it. Um, I've got uh, Freddie this summer is a very able-bodied sander and I got a nephew coming up from Arizona to stay for a while who also is an able-bodied sander. And uh, we're gonna sand that thing down Paint's not horrible on it. It's got kind of some old school pinstriping and stuff and we'll see what we come up with. Um, but I wanna put my own kind of, my own flavor of blue on it. We'll see where we end up there. Um, beyond that, of course, <laughs> you're probably laughing because the parking brake issue right now. But beyond that, it doesn't need a lot mechanically. Um, I had some comments in some other videos. This is in all my cab over videos. You're, in the cab over, you're always sawing on the wheel. You're always moving the steering wheel. And people are like, holy crap, that thing's not safe. What's wrong, man? Your front end's just a disaster. And I don't, I'm just saying, I'm, these are just the facts of it. Cab overs, uh, the steering linkage is set up completely differently than a conventional long nose semi. In a conventional long nose hooded semi, that steering shaft comes out of the firewall and goes straight to the steering box. That's it, just a straight line down to it. There is no nothing. In a cab over, it's a little different. The, the route that the linkage has to make and things, um, 
has has some different different roots from a conventional semi. So because of that, uh, when you turn the steering wheel a little bit, it doesn't the wheels don't respond like they would in the conventional semi. So I assure you that my cab over semis are mechanically sound. They're tight. They are safe. When you see me in a cab over having a saw on the wheel, that's that's common. This thing doesn't wear tires out. It's um, it doesn't chew through steer tires. In fact. For whatever reason, generally speaking, cab over semis in my life's experience have been a lot easier on steer tires than the conventional semis that I've owned, which has been many. So, uh, bring in the shop. We're going to paint it, go through it, um, you know, make sure uh, I'm going to get some fresh virgin tires put on it. I kind of want to go full blown space age with this truck, you guys. <laughs> Because it does so well, it, it is more efficient and appears to be somehow, I don't understand all the flows of aerodynamics, but I would bet money that this rounded nose uh, truck, similar to what you know you see in the cab overs in Europe, is more fuel efficient, or aerodynamically efficient rather, than a conventional semi, even the aerodynamic conventional semis. I think they just had to go away from this because people weren't digging it. Um, the cab over life. So I think I have something here as far as being a diamond in the rough aerodynamically. This truck has pumped out far better uh, flatbed mileage than my conventional trucks have, hauling the toilets around and, and hauling hay and whatnot. So very interesting to see when Rooster and I were hauling hay back and forth together, those big oversized loads last summer, Rooster was driving Blue 3 and using... Um, less fuel, quite a bit less fuel than I was in my Kenworth. So we'll see how that goes. But you guys, I'm thinking even like, I might even put like the, the wheel covers on, you know, the aerodynamic wheel covers. I might go full on everything I can find and think of to, to peek this thing out aerodynamically. It's already got the full fairings on it. Um, I want to ram that trailer right up against the back of my cab as best as we can and, uh, and go with it. I'm going to do all of that is what my hope and put it on the road hauling cattle. See, that's what I'm gonna do this fall. I'm gonna be hauling cattle with it. So you, you may see me out there and you may giggle and laugh, and I hope that you do because it's not meant to be bad to the bone. Like I, I didn't buy this truck because I'm like, dude, that thing is dope, bruh. Thing's dope, bruh. That's not why. I bought it for all the 10 reasons <laughs> that I already told you. So you guys, I'm glad you've enjoyed this cab over stuff. We'll continue to put it out. I have some other, better get back out of the wind. I have a few other cab over things that I want to do this year. I'm hoping to get the 79 down off of the hill. NASCAR has really got my schedule cramped up. It's really hard to find time to, you know, do the business, carry on and do the trucking I need to do, do the mechanicing I need to do and do the ranching I need to do. But I really, really, really want to get this 79 down and going. Um, which you haven't been introduced to yet on the old YouTube. So anyway, y'all, um, I'm trying to think of anything else to tell you about. Uh, that's about it. Gonna have a record out someday. I know you've been waiting for that. I promise it will be well worth the wait and the experience that it brings you will be wonderful. Um, got some new merchandise stuff that I'm gonna pump out here soon. Ben, Ben coming up with this rooster thing. Rooster, kind of a tribute to rooster. Everybody loves rooster and uh, working on a piece of merchandise that will kind of give a nod to old Rooster. So uh, that'll be forthcoming. The artist has it and is working on it right now. And uh, that's that, you guys. Thank you much, so much for the support. If you're new to the channel, you guys, there's a lot of good content way in the way back. Been doing a lot of fun and good stuff, entertaining things for a long time. Just doing the deal that we do. So until the next time, y'all, be good.